We're working on part six of problem five, the Space Quest problem. Space Quest, okay. Hamiltonian cycle problem, ham cycle, on directed graphs is known to be NP complete. Prove using a reduction involving ham cycle that SQ is in NP hard. Be sure to clearly indicate the direction your reduction proceeds, etc., etc. Look, we already solved that the previous time. So we already know that ham cycle is going to be up here. Space quest is going to be down here. Algorithm one is going to go this way. Algorithm two is going to go this way. Remember, A1 and A2 are both part of a reduction. Normally, this is going to be yes, if and only if yes. Uh, but um, let's hold off on that. Okay. So how do we reduce ham cycle to space quest? Uh, so first of all, uh, we've already reduced ham path to space quest, right? So one thing to do would be to reduce ham cycle to ham path, and then say, okay, we can reduce ham cycle to ham path, we can reduce ham path to space quest, we are done, those two reductions chain together. The composition of those reductions gives us a reduction from ham cycle to space quest, but this problem rudely tells us not to do that. Okay, so straight from ham cycle to ham space quest. Well, what's the input? It's going to be a graph. And there is no start vertex, there's no end vertex. We're going to visit all the vertices in a cycle, so it doesn't really matter where we start. So that's actually it. That's all of the input. Now down here, the input will be the same set of things as above. Okay, so there will be the space quest graph. What else do we have? We had, uh, let, let me just go back up and reference what we did before here. Okay, so we had the start system and K and theta. So let's go ahead and, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and put those in. We've got the start system, and k, and theta. Okay. So it's really tempting to start similarly, right? So we could say that the vertices in Space Quest are the same as the vertices in Hamiltonian Cycle. We could say the edges in Space Quest are the same as the edges in Hamiltonian Cycle. Um, we could then, well, how do we set the start star system? I kind of said it doesn't matter, right? So we just set the start star system arbitrarily. Um, then we can say k in Space Quest Hmm, k in Space Quest is just like last time, it's the number of vertices, and theta in Space Quest is 1 for every vertex. That'll force us to visit every star system. Uh, the trouble is, it, it doesn't actually it doesn't actually force us to come back to the original star system, right? Uh, so, that doesn't seem so good. Uh, so uh, another answer that seems tempting, by the way, uh, and the reason why I said, oh, let's come back to yes, if and only if yes, is maybe we can actually try every star system as being the starting star system, right? So we could we could start with you know one vertex as being the start star system, then another, then another, then another, and that's going to ensure that there is effectively a Hamiltonian path that starts at every star system. But even that doesn't obviously mean that there is a Hamiltonian cycle. I mean, we could go through and try and prove that if there's a Hamiltonian path from every star system, then there's a Hamiltonian cycle. And then what we'd be doing is doing what the book said. We can use the underlying problem multiple times if we want to. I'll let you think about that. It might be a fun thing to do, but never mind that. Let's see if we can make a reduction that'll make this work anyway. Um, so we want to be able to come back to the start star system, right? Uh, that is completely disallowed in Space Quest. You are not allowed to. So let's clone the start star system. Let's let's make uh, you know S S Q prime, okay? Uh, and we'll make the fugitives visit S S Q prime, and we'll have it be a stand-in for S S Q. Um, hmm. Think that through for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to try and set that up. So I'm going to go from here and say VSQ is equal to VHC 
union um, V for uh, an arbitrary vertex V in V uh, HC. So we're going to pick a vertex, okay? And I'm actually going to set this statement aside because I'm going to use it again, okay? SSQ is going to be equal to V. It's going to be that arbitrary vertex, okay? Um, oh, I should say V prime, right? What I'm doing is I'm adding a copy of the starting vertex, okay? Now, KSQ, you remember I want to make them visit everything, right? Um, so everything is now one extra vertex. So I'm going to make this equal to VHC, the cardinality of VHC plus one. So that'll handle uh, the extra vertex we've added in. In fact, it is actually the cardinality of VSQ, which is exactly the cardinality of VHC plus one. And theta, well, it's going to be the same as it was before. It's going to be equal to one for all V in VSQ. So I've got the setup that I need now to force this to visit every single one of the nodes. We already know from the previous reduction um, that this will indeed force what we want. The, the fugitives will visit every star system. Uh, but we want them to end now at this special new star system uh, that should sort of in some sense look exactly the same as the start star system. So how do we do that? Well, we actually already figured out how to do that on the last one, right? On the last one, we found a way to force them to end in a particular place. All we had to do was delete all of the outbound edges. Well, we're making this vertex, so all we need to do is make a set of edges that only allows going into V prime. So ESQ will be equal to EHC unioned this time with, we're going to add things to it this time instead of deleting things, unioned with, uh, we're going to let it go to V prime, U V prime, such that U V is an element of E H C. And we've just killed two birds with one stone. One way of thinking of what we're doing is, is actually to build a larger edge set and then prune it back. So think of it this way, if it makes it easier. We copy V. So now we've got two copies of V. Now we can actually force the cycle that we want, except it won't be a cycle. It'll start at V and it'll end at V prime. Now next we use exactly the same trick we used last time. Remember last time in the uh, ham path problem, we deleted all of the outbound edges from the node where we wanted to finish. Well, we do the same thing here. We copy V to V prime, and then we delete all the outbound edges from V prime. That's exactly the same as putting in V prime and only adding the inbound edges uh, from V to V prime. Okay, so will this work? I'm actually not going to step through the proof this time that this takes polynomial time. That ought to be obvious based on what we did last time, and you should know how to write out those steps pretty easily. Um, the only new part here is that I chose an arbitrary vertex instead of telling you how to choose the vertex. How do you choose a vertex arbitrarily? Uh, whatever representation you're using, scan through it and find the first name of a vertex and choose that. It does not matter. Okay, so clearly that'll take polynomial time. You're just going to scan once through the input. All right, um, all of this will take polynomial time. Uh, does it work? Is it the case that if there's a solution to SQ, there's a solution to HC and vice versa? Sure, for the same reasons as last time. However, I am cheating on one tiny point. Okay, this is not a big deal, not a big deal. But what's a trivial example of ham cycle? A trivial instance of ham cycle might look like this, an empty graph. Is there a Hamiltonian cycle in such a graph? A cycle that visits every node in the graph? 
Well, I don't know. That's kind of up to you in how you describe the problem. I mean, is it a cycle when it's got no nodes in it? It doesn't violate any of the conditions on being a cycle, but it also doesn't meet any of the conditions on being a cycle. So it really depends on how you define a cycle. Okay. Uh, so you need to figure out whether the answer to the empty graph is yes or no. And why do you need to figure that out? Is the empty graph allowed in SpaceQuest? The answer is no. It is not allowed in SpaceQuest. So it's actually not relevant uh, to whether you have to handle this case, whether the empty graph is allowed or not. Okay, you might be like, oh, as long as the answer is no, everything's fine. No, no it isn't fine. Whether the answer is yes or no, your reduction tries to choose an arbitrary vertex in VHC. Your reduction will fail whether the answer is yes or no. So you need to have a special case. Uh, so the answer is what you want. And I'm going to say the answer should probably be no, because an empty path is not a cycle. So the first step of your reduction looks like if the input graph is empty, then produce a trivial instance of SpaceQuest for which the answer is no. And we already saw above what a trivial instance would look like for that.